Hello! We are starting with a new section, Concepts of Tree. In this section, we will discuss a new kind of data structure called a tree. We will explore concept of a tree as a data structure, as an ADT, binary trees, different kinds of tree traversals and tree search algorithms. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with the tree data structure. In this video, we will look at the tree data structure and learn about depthwise and breadthwise traversal. A tree data structure looks very much like a real tree, the kind you can see in a garden or by the roadside. If we look at a tree, we will see that it has a root that makes the stem outside of the ground. The stem splits into branches and at the end of the branches we find leaves. In our tree data structure, we start from the root. The root is the node that does not have any parent. The children can be thought of as being attached to the stem by lines, just like the branches of a real tree. At the end, we find some nodes that have no children and hence are called leaves. Note that the tree is drawn upside down. The root is at the top and the leaves are below. This is just a convention that most people prefer. Think of this as a reflection of a tree on water. First, I have added some classes and interfaces that we will use later. Let's implement the class named tree. Now add the required Java package. A tree can be represented in many ways, but we will get started with the idea of generalization of a linked list. In the case of a linked list, a node stores a single reference that points to the next node. In a tree, a node needs to store the references to all its children. Multiple children could be stored in an array, but since we have access to our own class linked list, we will use that. We will use our non-functional version of the linked list because our first tree will be non-functional and will allow modification. Now we will implement the inner static class with the name node. Add the attributes for this class, then add the getters for children and value. Get value will return value and get children will return children. Now we will implement the constructor for node class which will initialize these attributes. This is the code. We have defined our node class as an inner class. Apart from remembering the value it stores inside and the list of children, it also stores the parent and the tree that it is a member of. Once we create an instance of a tree, we must be able to store a node in it. Let's add the attribute named root. The node that does not have a parent is called the root of the tree. So, we add an add root method to add a root to the tree. The tree itself only has to store the reference of the root node as all the other nodes can be reached from this node by traversing the references. Note that we test whether the tree already has a root node, in which case we throw an exception. OK, now that we have a way of adding a root node, we need to have a method for adding nodes as we like. The method takes a parent node and a value in order to add a new node. This method will return the newly added node so that we keep adding more nodes as its children. Here, we first check whether the parent is null or whether the parent is the node of a different tree instance. In either case, an exception must be thrown. Otherwise, we just add a new node as the child of the parent node passed as argument. But wait a second. How would we ever be able to pass a parent node if we do not have a reference to the root node in the calling code? So, we add a method, get root, to access the root node of the tree. Okay, now let's create a tree instance by implementing our main class. The code is self-explanatory. We just create a tree by adding the nodes one by one. But how do we see what the tree looks like? For that, we will have to learn about the traversal of a tree. Tree traversal is an algorithm to visit or to process all nodes of a tree exactly once. This obviously involves recursively looking into the children of the nodes. The order in which the children are processed depends on the particular algorithm we use. The simplest algorithm for traversing a tree is the depth first traversal. In the depth first traversal, we process every child of a node recursively and wait for it to finish with all its descendants before proceeding to the next child. To understand the depth first search, we have to understand what a subtree is. A subtree is a node with all its descendants up to the leaves. Here are some examples of subtrees. Now, if you think about it, 
Each node not only stores references to the children, but also sort of holds references to entire subtrees rooted at the child nodes. So the depth first traversal algorithm is nothing but these steps. Process the value in the current node. For each child node of the current node, recursively traverse the entire subtree rooted at the child node. So implement the method traverse depth first. The method takes a lambda and a node to traverse. All this method does is first run the lambda on the current value and then call itself recursively on each of the subtrees. Now we can write a wrapper method without the parent node argument. It is still not clear though why this way of traversing is called a depth first traversal. If you think about the order in which the nodes are processed, you can see that since the complete subtree root at any child node must be entirely processed before the next child is processed, the depth of the tree will be covered before the breadth. We have used a recursive function to do our depth first search. Alternatively, we can use a stack to do the trick. So look at the code for stack. Let's see what is happening here. We first push the root into the stack and go in a loop that continues until all the stack elements have been cleared. Every time we pop a node, we process it and push all its children into the stack. Now, since the stack is last in first out, all these children will be popped and processed before any other node can be processed. However, the moment the first of these children is popped, its children will be pushed into the stack and will be processed before anything else is processed. This will go on until we hit the leaf nodes, which would not have any more children. This, in effect, is almost the same as the recursive version. There is a slight difference between the outputs of this code and the recursive version, although both are indeed depth first. However, Please note that in the case of the recursive version, the child that is near the head of the linked list is processed first. In the case of the stack version, we push the children in the same order, but since the stack is last in first out, we pop the children in the reverse order. To reverse this order, we can store the list of children in the opposite order in a temporary list before pushing them into the stack. For that, replace this line with this code. The list is reversed by storing in a temporary list called reverse list by appending the elements to its beginning. Then the elements are pushed into the stack from reverse list. Then call the method traverse depth first using stack from our main method. When we run the code, we will see the values of the depth. Next is the breadth first traversal. Breadth first traversal is the opposite of the depth first traversal in the sense that depth first traversal processes children before siblings and breadth first traversal processes the nodes of the same level before it processes any node of the succeeding level. In other words, in a breadth first traversal, the nodes are processed level by level. This is simply achieved by taking the stack version of the depth first traversal and replacing the stack with a queue. That is all that is needed for it. Let's implement the method traverse breadth first. Note that everything else remains exactly the same as that of the depth first traversal, except these two lines. Here, we have created a queue and then called enqueue a method. We still take one element from the queue, process its value, and then enqueue the children. After this, call the method from the main method. We have called three traversal methods, so let's check the outputs of each. So here is the output for each. To understand why the use of a queue lets us process nodes level by level, let's look at the analysis. Root is pushed in the beginning, so root is dequeued first and processed. When the root is processed, the children of root, that is the nodes in level 1, get enqueued. This means the level 1 nodes would be dequeued before any further levels are dequeued. When any node in level 1 is dequeued next, its children, which are the nodes of level 2, will all get enqueued. However, since all the nodes in level 1 are enqueued in the previous step, the nodes of level 2 will not be dequeued before the nodes of level 1 are dequeued. This means all the level 2 nodes will be dequeued and processed before any nodes of higher levels are processed. When all the level 2 nodes are already processed, all the level 3 nodes will be enqueued. In a similar manner, in all further levels, all the nodes in a particular level will be processed before all the nodes of the next level are processed. In other words, the nodes will be processed level by level. So, we understood the tree data structure in this video.